I was born in a Muslim family. It's not only a Muslim family. Actually, they were a strong Muslim family. I remember from the six years old of my childhood, not before that, but from that moment, I remember that my father built a mosque at the other side of the street that he used to live. And I remember the first day that he took me to the mosque and introduced me to the Imam, the leader of the mosque. So I learned how to pray, I learned how to fast, and every step of ritual stuff that we have to do in Islamic faith, I try to learn it daily. And I was so close to the Imam of that mosque that pretty soon they appointed me as the one who was standing next to him when he was doing prayer, uh, what's going to happen the next step, bow down, stand up, and I will announce it through the loudspeaker so the crowd behind him could follow him. And I was reading Oran, I was just uh, reading the other books about Islamic faith, always asking from the Imam, I was very close to him, and I said, you know, I love to be with God forever because I knew there is a death after this temporal life. And I said, would you please let me know how much more should I pray and do fasting or any other thing because I want to know for sure when I die, I want to be with God. And there was no answer for me. He just stopped me. And then I went home and I asked my dad the same answer. I said, oh my God, if the Imam cannot answer me, and if he knew I'm searching the true God, why he is not encouraging me, what should I do? They knew I love to follow the religion, but there's no answer for me. I got married and I had a wonderful child. And at the age of 27, I went to Mecca. And I was praying in Mecca. Uh, somebody top on my shoulder said, are you married? I said, why? They said, because your accent, your pronunciation was not 100% right in the holy place of Ibrahim. And I have a recommendation from Allah to you. And I said, what's that? They said, you have to divorce your wife. And I was shocked because I said, I came here to follow God, worship God, and now I have to divorce my wife. And I told them, hey, there is something wrong here. I'm not going to stay anymore. So I left Mecca. And I went back home and knocked the door. My wife said, what are you doing here? I said, you need a religious man or a husband? If you need a religious man, then I have to divorce you. Otherwise, I stop that. But you know, Satan is clever. I got a car accident pretty soon, and that car in the highway flipped over a bridge eight times, and it stopped upside down. And when the people rushed toward that valley, they turned over the car, they broke the back window, they broke the door, and I was paralyzed. For 14 years, I was suffering. My left leg was paralyzed. Two times surgery on my back. Nobody could do anything. And I was ashamed of my wife because she loved me so much. Even my parents told, hey, you can go ahead and live for your for self because he is sick always. But there was no hope. My best friend became surgeon after 14 years. He couldn't do anything. I went to London with my wife. And over there, I got four different opinions. None of them were the same. I made a decision, I'm going to make a suicide. This is horrible life. My relative introduced me to his neighbor. And his neighbor, you, parents used to be a missionary to the country that I was born. And they came and visited me. They said, we carry to my doctor. And they drove for maybe two hours to a small city from the place that he used to live. And on the way, he asked me, how do you believe in Jesus Christ? And I said, stop. I went to Mecca, even over there. I couldn't find anything. Now you are bringing my, me back 600 years, years you know, uh, before that. Stop it. He said, no, just tell me who is Christ for you. And I said, he was a prophet. He came, he died, and God. It means stop. But praise God for him. He said, no, he is the son of God. He died, but he rose again. He's alive. And I said, would you please stop? I don't want to come with you. You make a man God. He said, I don't make a man God. I proclaim God became a man. It's a big difference. And so finally he carried me to the place and that was not a doctor. That was a church. And that church was showing the play about the life of Christ. And that was a turning point in my life. Because maybe you people that are watching right now knew that in Islam they told you that Christ never died on the cross. So I used to believe that, but here I was seeing that Christ died on the cross for me and the Lord brought me back to Mecca, reminds me, you remember over there, they told you go divorce your wife, and here I am. I left my glory in heaven, became flesh, died on the cross for you. My heart was beating so much, I wanted to give my life right now. The resurrection part was a big, big changing point in my heart. 
and the answer to my question that for, from the childhood how much should I pray more how much should I do the best to be with God and right now was the answer he gave his life for me he paid the penalty at that night I stopped but a week later this man didn't stop he took me to the church and the moment I went to the worship center the presence of the Lord just touched me surrounded me because the joy on the face of the people was incredible shaking hand to me welcoming me and I never forgot any time that I went to mosque even the leader of the mosque I was so respectful to him he didn't answer me right now the people who doesn't know me they welcoming me deeply and a lady in front of me asked me you have an accent where are you from and the moment he, she said you have an accent I was thinking oh another problem maybe uh, I don't know what should I do with my wife this time so on the way back I saw the Bible in my own language and I took it and decided to read it and then a week later the pastor came to our home and started to talk about the Bible and he started to explain about the Bible this is the Word of God and he explained you know we all have sinned and sure fall short of the glory of God and we need to repent and then he explained to me that Christ is the answer to our sin he died for us on the cross so if uh, you have any question about the salvation that's what the basic stuff of that you have to believe in your heart that Christ died on the cross for you and buried and rose again on the third day from that moment all of your sin has been forgiven and my wife was sitting there and those family they took me there they were there and I said pastor uh, I have a question and the moment that a Muslim guy asked a pastor of a church I have a question they thought oh wow the big problem they are going to ask you about the Trinity uh, the Son of God I said pastor really I want to tell you and confess that that night that passion touched my heart because the moment I saw Christ rose again from the dead and he before that died for my sin that was convinced me totally I knew that that's the truth I want to give my life to the Lord right now and it was amazing that the moment that the pastor started to lead us to a prayer and I saw my wife crying out and she did the same thing and I asked her why you did that she said I had the same feeling that you had that passion I didn't want to make another burden for you because you were sick and now I want to confess the same thing so that night was the first night after years of suffering of pain I went to sleep one hour continuously because other nights I had to wake up every other hours ask for help to change my position that was the reason that really changed my life and then we started to read the Bible and all of the answers was right there in the book of Matthew hey in the book of John especially in the book of John in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the world was with God he became flesh and devil among us and I said oh wow that's all the need what I need so we grew up in our faith and two months later I woke up and I had a feeling on my left leg and my wife thought I'm crazy she said don't stand up you will fell down and make broke then you know some other part of your body and I said no I have a feeling because she knew they put many needles here as an acupuncture I couldn't feel them right now I touch my leg and I feel it she carried me to the hospital the doctor after showed up examined me he said who did that your surgery on your back I said are you ready to hear that you are the greatest doctor in the area but my case was so worth it you rejected me but the greatest and cheapest doctor did that surgery he said tell me the name I said maybe you don't know him he said I am very familiar I said but he is not familiar and the moment I told him Jesus Christ he was shocked because he started to look at his, uh, you know, my file. Hey, I did this, I did this. You have to pay $25,000, maybe 99%. You are going to lose your right leg too. And he was watching me jumping in front of him. And I told him, Doctor, I'm not excited because I got healed. I'm excited because I got saved. I'm excited because if I got a heart attack in your office right now, my Jesus, my Lord is waiting for me. And that's the greatest joy of my life. So this is the same joy for you who are watching this right now. I'm not a special for God. God loves all the world. He gave His Son for all of you. The only thing that you have to do is put a little bit of faith. Trust on Him and accept Him who He is. He died for you on the cross. If you invite Him in your heart today, the Bible says all of your sin is going to be forgiven and your name is going to be written in the book of eternal life forever and nobody can grab it. Doesn't matter what happened to you, you will be the child of God. It's up to you.